Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. The song after this morning's preach word will be page 599. You want to mark your hymnals. Once again, that hymn will be 599. Now I would ask if you would, let us stand. Turn to 455. 455. I'd like to stay here longer than the allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by and by I'll tell and sing the story in the third on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus. As fervently I pray, as day by day I travel, I'll meet them ever night and live with them forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory, live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing the story, tell the story there on high, serve with my dear Redeemer. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. The end I know is nearing, by faith I look away. To yonder homes of Perno, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever, and look beyond the sky, and spend the endless ages. In glory by and by, oh yes, I'll live in glory, live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing the story, tell the story high on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more till you die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. say things sometime and we may not know. If you don't know what the rest of us know, 
is that we serve a good God. Amen. Amen. A gracious, a merciful God. Yeah. He has allowed us to wake on this morning to come and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. As we some praises unto him on this morning to edify one another, Amen. communicating with him on the behalf of one another, a great time in fellowship and together. Amen. And as we continue to fellowship with one another, we continue to have fellowship with him. And without the, the fellowship of him, God Almighty, and with the Son, and with the Spirit, we cannot have fellowship with one another Amen. and be pleasing unto him. Right. We are going to, to start on this morning, and I say start because I know that my Redeemer lives. Mm -hmm that we will not finish on this morning. I will not hold you too long. But every word, every word is what our Lord told the world's Lord that we must live by. Amen. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Every word. Temptation, as we all know, is no joke. Temptation is no joke. Amen. It's a struggle. And when we are able to overcome temptation, it is great. There was a, another verse that I was going to read this morning. I'm going to go ahead and read it now. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And you may see it again, but I just want to, to let you see it right now. Because of temptation, because of what our Lord and our Savior went through on the day when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted of the devil. The Bible says this in reference to temptation. No Temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what Paul wrote there. He did not write, God remove the temptation. God do not allow me to be tempted. But he wrote, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation. He will also provide the way of escape with the temptation. You know, we, we can tell people all day long, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. You don't know what I'm capable of doing. Well, I know what God's capable of doing. I know you do what you want to do, or shall I say we do what we want to do, but a lot of times it's not what God has given us the ability to do. 
Well, you mean tell me God didn't give us the ability to fight? Not with these. What we need to be fighting with is these. Oh, you didn't see that at least? These. Not these. We need to be on our knees. We need to understand the, the way of escape is not according to man's ways, but God's ways. Amen. He will make a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So when we look at what Jesus did with Satan, what did he use? He used Bible. He used scripture. Let's read it again. Matthew 4, verse 1. Matthew 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the willingness to be tempted by the devil. What was the purpose? To be tempted by the devil. Now, if... God allows us to be tempted. What do we just read? What would he give us? A way of escape. And after, 40, and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Not, not just a piece of bread, but loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But we need to understand temptation. We need to not allow ourselves to become overpowered by temptation. We, we should not cave in to temptation, but we should use the word of God. And know that again, he will be with us. He will protect us. He will help us. Amen. The ability that he has given us. We need to appreciate it. Every word. Every word. So a lot of times we we're listening to, to different songs. And, and by the end of that song, if that song starts repeating itself, we, we know every word. Whether well, it's good words or bad words, we know every word. What about the word of God? Do we know it? How much time do we spend in the word of God in order to use the word of God at its appropriate time? Jesus used the word of God in order to tell Satan, get thee hence. Get thee hence. It is by the word of God that we're going to be able to do the same. Amen. So we look here and we talk about the devil tempted Jesus with food. With food. Now why? Because he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. What better way to tempt him than with food? We would all be hungry after only one day or two days of fasting. You, you offer me something to eat, I'm hungry. This is what you need to do in order to get it. Mm, it all depends, right, on what it is. But we're trying to get away around it. We're, we're like, okay, well, you look over there, and then you're still trying to get the food, not doing what you were required to do in order to get it. Jesus didn't play that game. He did what the Father wanted him to do. He, he used scripture against the devil. Shall not live by bread alone. So with the bread, we need something else, don't we? We need Jesus. Amen. Jesus tells exactly what the Bible says. Again, scripture. Scripture is that Old Testament. Well, Jesus was still living here under the Old Testament, but he went back and he picked what was told there in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. So maybe we have a lot of people here today that are full 
of that physical food. What are you lacking? You're lacking the spiritual. Lacking the spiritual. I, I was talking to someone this morning. I'm just glancing around the room, and I see that they didn't make it back. But they told me that they have all of their physical needs taken care of. But they're missing out on the spiritual. They so say, you know what you need to do then? You know what you need to do. Man. See, a lot of times we're asking for help. But do we really want it? Do we really want it? And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, the man live. Are you living today? What do you think about that just for a moment? Are you living? You're breathing. Brother Thanopolis count, count every, every breath, every heartbeat counted. But are you really living? Are you living the way God desires for you to live? Well, I don't have that mansion. I don't have that, that, those nice cars. I don't have those fine cars. No. God never promised us that, did he? Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. He didn't say you would, you would have a nice brick home anywhere. He didn't say you was going to have that, that, that six-figure job. But you know, we can't have peace if we live by the word of God. Every word. How many times are we going to stress that? Just as many as we need to. Just as many as we need to because every word is what we need. I don't, I don't want what Jesus said in a nutshell. I want what Jesus said. Y'all don't understand that part, do you? See, there are some Bibles out there that are not complete. Oh, I know I hear somebody saying, well, that's not complete because it's not the King James. That's not complete because it's not the 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 NIV or, or some other version. No, there are some of those Bibles out there, those translations that take a whole lot of things out and they say, we just want to make this convenient for you to read. We want to make it an easy read. So we're just going to give you what Jesus said in a nutshell. Don't want that. Let's crack that shell. Let's open it up. Let's see what thus said the Lord. Amen. And let's look at every word. Every word. The word of God must be preached on any Bible subject. You know what people say? I don't want to hear that. Well, quit doing what you're doing and you don't have to hear it. Don't tell me that I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do that. Why not? The word of God says that you shouldn't. You know, there, there's a lot of people that are afraid to teach what God's word says because they don't want to offend anybody. You don't know me by now. Oh, I care about you. But if, but if you're offended by the word of God, it's your own fault. Because you're the one that's doing something wrong. If, if I'm offended by the word of God, it's my own fault. But I'm not going to be offended by the word of God. If you see me doing something wrong, come to me and tell me that Brother Melvin or Melvin or call me whatever you may call me. But let me know that what I'm doing is wrong. Man. And let me accept that just as I would like for you to accept it, just like God would like for you to accept it, and not only accept it, but change. We cannot pick and choose what we are to preach to people, what we're to teach them, we're to teach them the truth, preach to them the truth. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 8, Paul, as he writes to Timothy, Remember now, Timothy is a young man, and what Paul is writing to him, Timothy needs to take these things and run with them and teach them. He says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season, not to see the reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. 
For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. That day is now. We're living it right now. People don't want to hear the truth. You know, I'm, I'm glad that we have the elders that we have because I know that if I was anywhere else by now, I would not be there because of every word. I heard a man say one time in reference to preaching the truth that if, if, if you are in a place and the elders want you to preach this, what you going to do? He said, I'm going to preach it. He said, if they want you to preach this, what you going to preach it? Whether it's truth or not, he said, I'm going to preach it because that's what they want. I'm glad that the elders don't come to me and say, Brother Melvin, we need you to preach on this right here. We need to preach on that right there. We're covering it all, I do believe, Brother Ollie. What do you think? Are we covering it? If we're not, we, we can go back and we can look at it again and we can cover it. We're going to preach the truth because the Amen. truth is needed. Amen. He says in verse 5, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Well, I'm ready, I'm, for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, would award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And we have conversations about where we're we going to be in 10 years. What are we going to look like in 10 years? See, we need to understand that there are some that the fight is going to have ended. And there are others that need to step up and fight the good fight. Preach the word. In season, out of season. Don't change just because time is changing. Because God's word does not change. Amen. Oh, that's outdated. Out who? No, his word is not outdated. Amen. His word is what saves. His word is what we need. His word is what needs to be preached. His word is what needs to be adhered to. Amen. His word is good. And not just use one point of truth according to, to one's agenda. To what you want to hear. I'm tired of hearing about salvation. Be saved. <laughs> Don't tell me what I can do or what I can't do. Do what God says. Amen. Don't judge me. Judge yourself. It'll, it'll be okay, right? Maybe. The whole counsel of God must be preached. Must be taught. The whole counsel of God. And, and I accept the 20. And the verse is 27. Acts chapter 20 and the verse is 27. What does he say? You know, again, going to God's word and looking at what his word says is, is what's going to save us. There's a lot of people that like to say, you know, I, well, you know, they don't want to hear that, so therefore I'm going to step back and I'm not going to, I'm just not going to tell it to them. Well, who's going to tell it to him then? He said, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. I didn't draw back. The whole counsel is what we need. When, when you don't have the whole story, you don't have the whole story. We need the whole story. We need the whole story in order for us to live the whole truth. We need to live the whole truth in order for us to hear what God says and what he has promised us, what he will do for us. 1 Peter 4, verse 11. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, the word of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen must preach it. No, no, 
not if I, you, know, if you call yourself a preacher, you call yourself an evangelist, you call yourself a teacher. It must be God's word that you use in order to have people to know what the truth is all about. James 2, verse 10. James 2, verse 10. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. I've, got, I've, got, I've done what you asked me to do. What's this? Oh, I forgot to do that. Well, you have not completed the mission. No part is non-essential. No part. See, that's what we need to understand. No part is non-essential. We have to understand that we need the whole counsel of God. Amen. The whole counsel of God from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation. I can't understand it all. Keep studying it. Amen. Keep studying it. Mm -hmm. Spend more time in God's word. Here we are at the beginning of a new year. You know, we got those new Bible plans out there, new Bible readings. How many of you finished last year's? You know, we, we always want to start afresh. But let me give you something to start on. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. How are you going to live it? How are you going to live it? Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Can't go back and live yesterday. You can't jump forward and live for tomorrow. Today is what we have. So let's do what we're supposed to on today. What does the Bible say about salvation? You know, we, we talk about salvation again all the time and, and we ask ourselves the question because individuals always say you don't have to do that in order to be saved. You don't have to do that in order to be saved. All I got to do is what he said. Who he? If that he's not God, then you don't need to listen to he. You didn't listen to what God says. Saved Amen. by faith. Amen. We are saved by faith. Amen. But know this. It is not faith only. It is not faith only. Romans 5 verse 1. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You've been justified by faith. Your actions. What, 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 what kind of faith do you have? We, we talked about Peter and Peter's fell in faith. Oh, Peter, when, when did your faith fail you? Oh, you a little faith. How much faith do we have in God? Oh, are we really justified by faith because we're doing what God wants us to do? We're saved by faith. We're saved, we're saved by grace. Well, what kind of God did I tell you? We serve a gracious God. Unmerited favor. God has given us so much. You know what we have done in return? We've thrown it up in his face. I don't want that. We ask for so much and God give us so much, but yet it's not really what we... Let's remove self just for a moment. And let's think about God. But we have to have self in there. He's given us things that we do not deserve. We're still asking, asking, asking. And God has given it to us. We, we just have our eyes closed and we can't see it. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Whoa, whoa. We're going to connect both of those together? Yes, we are. Why? Because God's word connects them together. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not, not a result of work so that no one may boast. No one. It's a gift. How many gifts have you received lately? Something that you didn't ask for. Something that you did not deserve, but you received it because it's a gift. Someone wanted to give it to you. 
How many of you have turned down gifts? You know, this free gift that God has offered to mankind, there are many that are slapping his hand away. I don't need you. I don't need that. Yes, you do. If, if God so desired right now to take all the oxygen out of the air, oh, there's a lot of you that's going to be calling on him. Amen. A lot of you, a lot of us. We need him. He does not need us. Amen. So we need to wake up and realize Amen. that it is by words that we are saved. So, someone mentioned the other day, we're not saved by, by words. We're saved by the word. This word here is filled with words. And we need to understand that it is by the words that we find here in this book that's called the Bible that we're saved by those things. Acts chapter 11, verse 13 and 14. Acts 11, verse 13 and 14. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. A message is generally more than one word. It's filled with words. Some messages are short, some are long. But the message that, that Ananias declared unto Saul was a message that would save him. You know, when we look at these messages and when we look at these things and we look at the message that, that was taught and the message that was heard, understand again that Peter here, when, he, when he's saying these things, talking, talking about the message, that it's not just going to save that individual, but it's going to save his household as well. What saved you? What message did you hear that pricked your hearts to say, I am now ready to become a child of God? What message did you hear? Again, the message needs to be plain. The blood of Christ saves us. Well, what, what do we have here? We have faith, grace, words, and the blood of Christ. The four things right there that save us. You know, from time to time, I'll give you a list of 24. We, we don't have 24 today, but a list of 24 different things that saves us. And the question is asked at the end, which one can you leave out? Which one can you leave out? You, you, if you want the Father, who must you have? You must have the Son. If you have the Son, who must you have? You must have the Spirit. Ask yourself, which one can you leave out? They, they, they work in unison. They work in one accord. Which one can you leave out? One is not going to say anything different than what the other has said. We just need to accept it. We're saved by the blood of Christ. Revelation 1, verse 5. Revelation 1, verse 5. I'm only giving you one, one scripture out of the list there. But I want you to, to take those things down and go back and read them to look at what saves us. Teach it to someone else in order that they may understand that salvation is only according to the word of God. Revelation 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. His blood. That sacrifice that was made on the cruel cross of Calvary. In order for us to have salvation, Jesus shed his blood for our salvation, not his. For our salvation. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. We're saved by hope. You know, I tell you from time to time, wishing and hoping is two different things. Hope is something that we all need and that can be fulfilled. A wish is hit and miss. But a hope can be fulfilled. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Romans 8, verse 24. 
For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what he sees. This light is on. I hope this light is on. I see it's on. I don't have to hope that anymore, do I? Something that we all hope for. We hope to get to heaven. Haven't been there yet, but we hope to get there. Amen. What we have to do is we have to become saved. Live a life that is pleasing to God and, and understand that it's only this way that we're going to only, only be able to get there is by being saved. James 2.24. James 2.24. It's where we need to go, right? And understand that faith alone does not save. Looking at what God's word says, we, we, need, we need faith, but we also need something else. In James chapter 2, in the verse is 24. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith only. Justified by works. People say, you know, works are not going to be able to save you. Yes, if they are in conjunction with faith. You can't do all of these things and say, you know, I'm going to get to heaven now. Although I've never been baptized, I've never put Christ on, never lived the way God wanted me to live, but I've done a whole lot of things. Thank you for your time. But your services are no longer required. Sad day. That day in which Jesus will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You did not have faith. You did not accept the grace. You did not listen to the words. You did not understand that my blood was the blood that was going to save you. You had no hope. So therefore, you have no salvation. Baptism, 1 Peter 3, 21. 1 Peter 3, 21. The light figure whereunto baptism does now also save us. Not to put in the will of the filth of the flesh, but to answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what, what must we do then? We must be obedient after baptism. We must be obedient. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Obedience. I'm here. What are you doing while you're here? Are you lifting your voice to praise God? Brother Tanopis, again, praying about the monies in your pocket. Did you dig into your pocket in order to get some of those monies out in order to put into the collection plate because you knew it was the right thing to do? What about partaking of the Lord's Supper? Were you obedient to take of the Lord's Supper? But no, you sat there and you said, my life is filled with sin. I don't deserve to take the Lord's Supper. Get rid of the sin and partake of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of the one who gave his life in order for us to be able to live. We can make a lot of excuses. Here's Brother Tanop's line right here. In the court of law, one is expected to do what? Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen. It is God's word that we are saved by. Amen. Are you willing to accept it? Are you willing to live it? Today is all we have. Today is all we have. If you're here and you're not a child of God, again, these are the things that will save you. Listen to what God's word says. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen to what Jesus says. Except ye believe that I am he, you would die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse 24. L listen again to what Jesus says. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. The words of Jesus. This is what people cry for. Give me the words in red. I'm just giving you the word. It, it can be in pink. I don't care. Know that it's the word of God. Jesus says, if you confess me before man on earth, I will confess you before my Father who's in heaven. But if you deny me, I will deny you. I will deny you. And then, once you're baptized, if you accept all those things, and you're baptized, live a faithful life. Continue to stay in God's word. Do the things that are right. So if you are alien sinner. That's one that has never come to Christ. Come to him on today. 
make the confession, be baptized, rise into walk of newness of life. Maybe you're here and you are a child of God, but you're straight away. We're encouraging you on today to come back to him. Confess your faults, be forgiven, and live a life that's pleasing unto him. If you're here in your subject, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. 599. Come to Jesus, he will save you, though your sins as crimson glow. If you give your heart to Jesus, he will make them white as snow. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come, come today. Come to Jesus, do not tarry. Enter in at mercy's gate. Oh, delay not till the morrow, lest I come in. Come to Jesus, come, come to death, come to Jesus. 